Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at forms of linear equations and categorizing them as either being slope intercept, point slope, or standard form. You can see these three forms of equation, which I'm not going to identify which is which just yet, but you can see those three forms of equation here below me, and you can see that even though there are some similarities, there are also some distinctions, some differences in between these. But before we can go looking at all of these different forms of linear equation, kind of good to know what we're talking about with a linear equation. So a linear equation is just an equation that represents a linear function. Now remember the graphs of these linear equations will always be a straight line. That's where they get their name, linear. And in order to describe a linear equation, to know everything about it, all we need is either two points or a point and a slope. Either one of those will work. We have three forms of linear equation that we're going to focus on. We have slope-intercept form in red, point-slope form here in blue, and standard form in orange. And what you see presented here are for each one you have an example equation specifically the one that we looked at uh, in the first two slides and then underneath it what you have is what's called the general form of the equation and for the general form of the equation what this means is that we want to take anywhere where there could be numbers uh, for instance if we look at slope intercept form we have the 3 and we have the positive 2 as numbers. The y and the x are always going to be there, representative of the two values that we are comparing. So notice here we have a y and an x and a y and an x. Those will always be features of linear equations. But we also have these numbers. And in the general form, we generalize them down to a variable that helps us describe what that number means. And so you can see that we have all of these numbers corresponding to letters in their general form. I am asking you to memorize these general forms. If I ask you for the general form of point slope, you should be able to spit out at me y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. You should know these by heart. Um, and by the time we're done with this particular quiz cycle, you should know what all of those mean as well. So now let's look at one particular form focusing on slope intercept form. And here we have the general form y equals mx plus b which you should be pretty familiar with from middle school. This is nothing new, you've seen it before. And we can look at some typical examples of this. y equals 3x plus 2, and here we can see that our m is represented by the number 3, and our b by the number 2. We can also have those numbers be negative, that's no problem. So, for instance, y equals negative 5x minus 3. In this case, m would just be negative 5, and b would just be negative 3. So all I'm doing in all of these is just replacing m and b with numbers. Now, that being said, there are some special cases. There are some things that can happen. For instance, the equation y equals 4x even though it doesn't look like y equals mx plus b, this is in slope-intercept form. It's just that in this case, b is equal to 0. And when you're adding 0 to something, it doesn't change it, so we don't need to write the plus 0 in there. So we just leave it as y equals 4x. So when b is equal to 0, our slope-intercept form will look like this. We could also have the special case where m is equal to 0. So if I had the equation y equals 0x minus 5, 0 times x is just 0, so that term would go away, leaving me with just y equals a number. So we could argue that this was slope-intercept form as well. m is a coefficient. It's a number we're multiplying times a variable. 
So when m is equal to 1, like in this case right here, we don't actually have to write it. So if I ask you what m was in this example, 1 would be the correct answer, even though there is nothing written there. Likewise, if there is only a negative sign on the x, that means that we had a coefficient of negative 1. Now we can look at the slightly more complicated point-slope form. The general form of this is written as y minus y sub 1 equals m times quantity x minus x sub 1. And there's a lot going on here. Let's first talk about this sub 1 business. So the way I'm pronouncing that, in case you're wondering, is sub, S-U-B, 1. And that comes from the fact that the style of writing, where it's written below the level of everything else, is called a subscript. Just like exponents were written in superscript, super meaning above, sub means below. Just like a submarine is below the sea, subscript is writing below the level of everything else. And just as with others, we see that we have numbers that will replace all the variables except for y and x. So y sub 1 is a 2 in this first example, m is a 3, and x sub 1 is a 1. And we can look at the same thing down here. It's acceptable for these numbers to be positive or negative, so both of those will happen. And just as with slope-intercept form, we have some special cases. Sometimes these things don't look exactly like the general form, but are still point-slope form. For example, in, in this top one, y equals 4 times quantity x plus 3, notice those parentheses. The parentheses are a dead giveaway for point-slope form, but in this case, y sub 1 is 0. And when I have that 0 added or subtracted, that doesn't change anything, so I don't have to write it. So even though I don't have anything paired with my y on the left-hand side of the equation, this is still going to be point-slope form. Now looking at this one, y minus 5 equals negative 2x. This again is point-slope form, but what has happened this time is that x sub 1 is 0. And when x sub 1 is 0, I don't need to write minus 0. It doesn't change anything. So that just leaves me with 2, or negative 2 rather, times x. And I don't really need the parentheses at that point. So when x sub 1 is 0, the parentheses will disappear. And my equation will look like this. But it is still point-slope form. And just as with slope-intercept form, it's possible that m being a coefficient could be 1 and thus implied and not directly written. So I could have a 1 or a negative 1 with no number written before the parentheses. Our final form of equation is called standard form. The general form of standard form looks like ax plus by equals c. So we can have some of our quote-unquote normal examples where we're just replacing a, b, and c with numbers. So just as before, everything that's not x and y that's listed as a variable in the general form is going to be replaced with a number. And we can see those numbers, you know, they can be positive, they can be negative, whatever it happens to be. And just as with my other two forms, it is possible that I have some special case things going on. For example, if the coefficient of x that is a, if a is 0, such as in this first case right here, I wouldn't necessarily write it, and so I would just get some number, oh, excuse me, that's a plus 4, uh, so I would just get some number times y is equal to whatever our c value is. So if the x term is missing, that just means that a is 0. Likewise, if the y term is missing, that just means that b, the coefficient of y, was 0, and I don't have to write it. 
And since a and b are both coefficients in this, I can have them be 1 or negative 1, and they're not written, they're implied. So with all of that being said, now that we have seen all the moving parts of these three forms of linear equation, let's look at them all at the same time and distinguish them from one another. That is, we're going to analyze what's going on in an individual equation to determine which form it is. So when we look at y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form, the thing we notice is that the y is by itself. It has no coefficient, it has no number added or subtracted to it, and we have over here this very distinctive uh, pattern that you're used to with a coefficient of x and then x and then some number added or subtracted. So the distinguishing feature for slope-intercept form is going to be that y by itself on one side of the equation. If you see that, you should immediately think slope-intercept form. For point-slope form, there are two things that we want to look at. First are the parentheses. When you see those parentheses, the first thing that should jump out in your mind is point-slope form, because you'll notice neither slope-intercept form nor standard form has those parentheses. Now, there are situations where x sub 1 would be 0, and those parentheses aren't there. So the other thing to look for is, is this y paired up with something else? So here we have a y minus 6, as opposed to just the y by itself. So two things to look for for point-slope form. Is the y on a different side of the equation than x with another number with it? Or do I have those parentheses? In standard form, the key feature is that x and y are going to be on the same side of the equation. If you'll notice in point-slope form, y and x are on different sides, and in slope-intercept form, they are on different sides as well. Recalling now that our objective was to classify these, hopefully you can now look at the three equations we started with and tell me what form they're in. y equals 3x plus 2. We notice the y by itself on one side of the equation, letting us know that this is slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. When we look at this equation, we notice parentheses. We notice a number paired with the y on this side of the equation. And we notice that y and x are on different sides of the equation, so this must be point-slope form. And finally here we see that x and y are on the same side of the equation. Both have coefficients, 3 and negative 1. And we have a constant term, just a number on the other side, so this one must be standard form.